Hello, my name is Kerstin Schrödinger. I'm the di director or um, artist behind the work, The Song of the Shirt. Um, this uh, work is shown in the Forum Expanded exhibition in Silent Green in Wedding. <laughs> um, we are installing it right now uh, and the opening is on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I would be happy to see you there. The Song of the Shirt is a work um, in multi layers, but it's mainly about the history of the Luddites and um, contemporary attempt to, to bring this movement of the machine breakers uh, into um, questions of today's uh, machines that are needed to be destroyed. Hello, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film The Song of the Shirt. Hi, Kerstin. Welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the Berlinale. Um, we are very glad to have you here today to discuss uh, this very interesting project. Can you tell us um, what was the inspiration behind the work? Um, well, it's a work about um, cotton production and the history of industrialization. So we had um, the inspiration, I think, came from um, basically a play from the 1920s uh, called the Machine Stürmer, mm. uh, the Machine Wreckers, and um, this play was basically the inspiration. And then I went to uh, try to actualize that or put that into a present uh, setting. Yeah, can you tell us a bit about the different layers of the film? It's it's it was very interesting to see because it it's it is kind of like a um, a theater performance set up. Um, there are multiple screens within the screen, basically. Can you tell us a bit about this textuality of, of, the, of the piece? Um, yes, uh, so uh, it's an installation. So it's shown in the Forum Expanded exhibition. It's maybe yeah. important to know that it's um, not shown as a single right. screen. and. Uh, um, or a single screening, and so you have a continuous shot that goes for the the length of uh, forty six minutes, and it also loops. So it kind of starts where it begin, uh, it ends. It starts where it ends, mm -hmm. or it ends yeah. where it begins. Um, and then uh, what you see is a sort of a yeah, as you said, a, a performance uh, space in which different screens are activated and um, brought into being projections um, and this was kind of a, a narrative tool for me to to tell the story from different the different locations I was um, working at and also the different um, time frames and also the different other layers so that's kind of my attempt to bring this mm -hmm. together in a, in a space spatial arrangement Right, let's talk a bit about the temporality of the piece. Um, you, you said that it refers back uh, to, this, to this play that you just mentioned. Um, it kind of dialogues with, with this um, 18th, 19th century movement of the Luddites as well. But then it's also very contemporary. Um, can, you tell, can you explain a bit about this very interesting temporal dialoguing within, within your piece? Yeah, so I was trying to find out how to bring these questions from the Luddite movement into the present time. And um, I was working mainly in, for a while I was working mainly in Egypt as a place of cotton production, um, a historical place of cotton production and in decline of contemporary cotton production. Oh. We lost your voice for a moment. Should I start again? No, it's, it's fine. It, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I lost the track. So I... Um, yeah, how you wanted to dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I was... I um, yeah, I was trying to find... I was working in Egypt to find and we're trying to 
find the traces of uh, of this machine breaker movement as a continuity in in contemporary worker struggles as well and um and my core question is basically what how how present these questions are now mm -hmm. um that was raised in the in the beginning of the industrialization as we are now in the kind of post-industrial time right it was very intriguing how you also paralleled or connected more so um the this this struggle of the workers with also struggles of of queer communities can you explain a bit about this connection that you that you draw in the film um i say i'd say so the the text that is spoken in the film is is a exchange of letters between uh, um, my friend navara belal and and me and we were we are mainly talking about uh, some experiences we had when we were doing a workshop together in in cairo um and that workshop was about um crafting with like uh, handarbeit like doing like yeah. needlework for example and um and storytelling um so i think we were actually so it was basically a, a queer feminist moment for us but it was also very subtle so um we were trying to um tell stories and but also find stories um reveal stories that have been told for for a long time um and this kind of related on many levels to also um work around textile production so mm -hmm. it gets goes in like many different directions but in that context i was we were actually talking a lot about um you know these kind of motivations of the luddites to destroy machines mm. and what contemporary machines would be that we would want to destroy and patriarchy being obviously one of them so mm -hmm. um i think this is what maybe what you refer to when you say the, yeah. the queer community or the queer feminist um, approach Aspect. there yes yeah absolutely in a way it also felt to me that this particular piece is at least somewhat informed by um, by Donna Haraway's work, or at least it can somewhat dialogue with that. Was this a reference uh, for the piece, or or is it something that is sort of coincidental? No, I, I agree. Um, I mean, it's good uh, good uh, reference. Um, I mean, the text comes together with um, with many different connections to other work, um, and I think in this kind of feminist um, scholars, there were a few people very important. Donna Haraway being one of them. Um, uh, we were actually interested in this text where she talks about the string figures. Mm, okay. as a narrative structure yeah uh, and then there's also more maybe post-colonial um, thinkers like Twinti Minha who are also very uh, central I guess for was well, very central in these discussions that we had Navarra and I yeah the performativity of the piece is also very important can you tell us about how you choreographed this one continuous shot um in which um the piece occurs and and particularly about the performative elements of it yeah so there's three um main visual uh, main performers that you see uh, performing and then there's a few others in the background um mm -hmm. which is maybe also a part of what i would call the queer community because we were very um for the three days of shooting, we were very much like a bubble that um, was like moving together through this space in, yeah. in a constant uh, circling. Um, and the three performers, they are, um, well, I call them the projectionist, the screen maker and the 
um, uh, seamstress. So one is operating mainly a sewing machine and one is operating the projectors. So she's putting the projections in, uh, in position and yeah. also turning them on and off. And then the most active performer is um, what you can see in the background. Oh, yeah, um, right. Yeah. Uh, the, she's um, putting on and off the, the, the uh, projection screens. So she's holding right. them or she's hanging them or she's weaving them. Um, and that's basically how this um, performance is guiding the camera throughout the, throughout the space. Um, and the choreography is mainly aligned to that movement of, of these different screens that are being yeah. brought up, but it's also in that sense um, improvised, no? It's not like... Sure. Uh, it's, it's not com in, yeah. a, in a very strict sense. Yeah. Um, I was curious about the footage um, that you use. Some of it is, I assume, is what you have shot um, in, 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 in these different, ter different territories that, that the piece covers. Um, but it also seemed like that you use archival footage um, in this as well. Can you talk a bit about the archival research that you, that you did for the film? Yeah, so it was quite um, laborious, I would say. Um, yeah. The archival footage was some was very interesting uh, discovery from the place called Simatek in Cairo, who has a news. They have a newsreel archive of yeah, um, okay. Egyptian films. Um, so I could find these um, uh, visits to the factory of like some government officials from the 50s or 60s, I don't know exactly yeah. when. Um, then there's a, um, there's a sort of experimental film um, that I also reference in the, as, or cite in the projections. Um, it's a, a film called Revolution of Machines um, by uh, Matu Takib. Okay. Uh, from the, also from the 60s and then there's another film that I reference which is much older it's um, I think from the 1920s mm. early 30s I'm not quite sure um, and now I lost the title <laughs> um, <laughs> it's Joris Evans it's um, film titled Misère du Borinage, um, misery in, in Borinage. Mm, so okay. it's a film about the uh, uh, workers' struggles, basically in in a yeah. in a mining town in in Belgium. Um, yeah, so they loosely coming together in this in this background projection. In that mm -hmm. in that case, it's it's really more in the background and has more the function yeah. of a sort of rhythmic. Um, element yeah absolutely um for me after after viewing this whole and unfortunately i was only able to see it as as, as a as a film not as part <laughs> of of this exhibition uh yet uh, for me it kind of felt like um that one of the major underlying themes of it or or some sort of sensibility that can come out of this work is very strongly connected to solidarity um, as if that's like like yeah a weave like or thread uh, that we could like follow in this uh, in this project uh, would you agree with that and 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 what was your take on on yeah on solidarity as as, as a theme within the entire piece mm. yeah i think I, maybe one of it was related to what I mentioned before that really the film crew and the performers we we we, we were really for the three days we were very um, creating this kind of one body almost mm. you know that we were yeah. very because you know we had like that this this um, forty six minute shot of I don't know forty something minute shot yes. shots and 
we did one after the other. So there were the, the kind of rehearsals and the last mm. one was the one that became the work. Um, so it had this very, it was very intense in that, yeah. in that time of the, of the shooting. And then there's also the, the choir. So everyone in the, on, in this room was involved in, um, uh, in one part where in, in several sections of the film, there's a, a choir that kind of sinks yeah. through the transition from one space to the next. Um, so I think this choir, um, uh, one of the people working on the film uh, uh, said, oh, I think they sound a bit like a suffragette's choir, you know, that they mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, right. Um, and I really like that idea that it's kind of this, kind of, yeah, so that the people who are working on the film are actually also kind of giving their voice in there, or I don't know. Yeah, right. Hmm. Becoming also uh, audible for them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's very interesting indeed. I was also curious about this. How did you come up with this idea to structure the piece? Because it felt like that, that this choir is it's kind of um, the recurring thing that holds everything um, together. And then also for me, it brought up associations with, uh, with plays of antiquity and, 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 and these kind of um, literary references. How did you come up with this idea? Yeah, I think that came actually back from this uh, original play that I was reading mm, okay. um, because it's a theatre play. Yeah. Um, and so the, first I thought, oh, this choir could be a way to bring back this this play back into the into the film. Mm. Um, but then I also thought you know, that's kind of the, um, the choir is, I mean, it can also be something that is a bit like um, outside of the actual setting, you know, they kind mm -hmm. of in the, especially in the antique, in the antique sense, they also, um, they often comment, no, they, they're not, yeah. Um, yeah. they're not inside the play, but they only give the, like comments or they, they know also more than the rest of the, right. <laughs> of the performance. Right. So, um, I think that was also interesting to give the the people who are working maybe the the saying that they have a, actually more knowledge than mm. the yeah. main protagonists also. Yeah, fascinating. Kerstin, thank you very much uh, once again for talking to us uh, about the song of the shirt. Um, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale.